Hello, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin. In this video, we're going to discuss the structure of the Earth's atmosphere. Let's take a look at this image, and you'll see there are many layers to the Earth's atmosphere. But I'd like you to look closer. This isn't just a diagram that shows the layers of the Earth's atmosphere, but rather, it's a graph. A graph of temperature and altitude. Notice the red line is the temperature at various points of the Earth's atmosphere. Let's look at this a little more closely. Starting off with the troposphere. The word troposphere means changeable. This is the location of the atmosphere where virtually all weather occurs. There are occasional clouds and winds that extend beyond the troposphere, but most of the weather that affects us, clouds, rain, snow, that occurs in the troposphere. In general, we say the troposphere is around 11 kilometers thick. That's an approximate number because the troposphere at the equator is much thicker than the troposphere at the poles. This is due in large part to the Earth's rapid rotation. Another thing that's important to notice is the temperature drops with increasing altitude. The higher up you go, the colder it gets, until you reach the upper limit of the troposphere that we know of as the tropopause. If you've ever had a chance to fly in a commercial airline, you probably were flying around the tropopause. These images I took on a flight back to the United States from Australia. Notice the temperature indicated in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Minus 83 Fahrenheit is approximately minus 65 Celsius. These temperatures indicate that the plane was flying right at the tropopause. Next from the troposphere is the stratosphere. This layer extends up to about 50 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. In the upper stratosphere is where we'll find the ozone layer. Remember, ozone is that special molecule of oxygen with three oxygen atoms. Ozone is particularly strong at absorbing ultraviolet energy from the sun. The temperature increases due to the ultraviolet light being converted to heat energy. The upper region of the stratosphere is known as the stratopause. Next highest, we'll see the mesosphere. Extending up to about 85 kilometers, this area, known as the coldest layer of the atmosphere, may see temperatures dropping as low as minus 80 or minus 90 degrees Celsius. The upper limit of the mesosphere, the mesopause. Beyond the mesosphere, we'll find the thermosphere. The thermosphere is known for extremes in temperatures. Keep in mind, the pressure is so low and the amount of atmosphere here is so tenuous that there really isn't much air at all. Because the molecules are that far apart, they can move extremely fast, which is why we say the temperature may end up in the hundreds or even thousands of degrees. The strong solar energy may also interact with the molecules, stripping electrons away from the atoms, creating ions. The ionosphere may change how radio signals propagate around the surface of the Earth. There is no upper limit of the thermosphere. After we reach 100 kilometers, we say we are entering the exosphere. This is where the atmosphere gradually fades thinner and thinner, and beyond 100 kilometers is generally the accepted start for space. For the rest of this class, we'll focus on what happens in the troposphere. Most of the time in the troposphere, temperature decreases with altitude. Although on rare occasions, we can see a strange hook at the bottom of this graph as indicated by the yellow arrow. This is what we call a temperature inversion. Let's take a look at this with a little more detail. Under normal circumstances, we'll find warmer air down near the surface of the Earth 
gradually getting cooler the higher up you go. If a factory is producing smoke, that smoke will rise in the progressively cooler air. It will eventually disperse at higher altitudes. On the other hand, if we have an inversion, what that means is there are cooler layers of air closer to the surface with warmer air aloft. If the same factory produces smoke, that smoke will cool in the cooler surface air and it will not continue to rise through the warmer layer above. This traps that smoke closer to the surface of the earth. This, of course, is one of the major factors for atmospheric pollution. Take a look at this image from Hanging Rock State Park, one of the North Carolina's beautiful state parks not far from my home. This picture was taken on a clear day in the winter. On a day when there was a strong temperature inversion, you can notice brown layer in the atmosphere. Let's take a look at that again. On the clear day, you can see a great distance. From basically the same vantage point, the atmosphere is much hazier with this brown layer of atmospheric pollution. When we talk about atmospheric pollution, we need to examine the pollutants. The most common pollutants come from the burning of fossil fuels. Gases like sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, ground level ozone, and the various assortment of nitrous oxides can all be considered atmospheric pollutants. Keep in mind, the various nitrogen oxides plus sunlight is what cause photochemical smog. There are factors that increase pollution beyond just the burning of fossil fuels. Temperature inversions and geography both can play significant roles. That's evident in this image of my childhood home of Upland, California. You can see the city below and the mountains above, but this layer of smog is trapped by the inversion vertically and the mountains horizontally, making the greater Los Angeles area known as one of the places with a particularly problematic pollution problem. I have hoped you find this look at the structure and composition of our atmosphere helpful. In the next video, we'll take a look at energy in the Earth's atmosphere. Thanks for watching.